Megan Hicks of I Run Far. I'm with Courtney DeWalter. It's the morning after the 2023 Hard Rock 100 Endurance Run. Good morning, Courtney. Congratulations on your amazing run this weekend. Thank you. So <laughs> glad to be in Silverton. It was just this time 24 hours ago that you were crossing the line. Can you take us to that moment and the feeling inside both your legs and your brain? <laughs> when I finished? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I mean, it was touch and go the entire run <laughs> of if how I could get to the finish. And so when I finally got above town and knew that we were here and all I had to do was <laughs> roll downhill and kiss a rock, it was a sweet, sweet relief for sure. Um, if I can be honest, this was the first time that I've seen you race in quite a long time where the pain cave was actually externally visible for, I don't know, a lot of miles of the race. Is that what it was like inside your body too? Yeah, it was almost immediately from the beginning. So the first block even running oh. it, it just felt, everything just felt tired and it felt hard. And it was like, where are my body systems? <laughs> like, where are my legs? Where are my arms? Where are my lungs? And where's my head? Because nothing was working together. And uh, it stayed that way pretty much the entire race where just one of those runs where you have to work for every mile. None of them came for free. None of them flew by quickly. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, yeah, full effort the whole time. You've talked a lot before about like one of the biggest missions of trail running and these ultra runs is troubleshooting. Um, and I don't know, maybe sometimes there's like three problems to troubleshoot. Were you troubleshooting like all day, all night long? Kind of, but also I kind of tried to just settle into like, okay. this is the situation, like you're tired. And so I was trying not to focus on it too much. Okay. And I definitely was trying not to like, think of all the reasons I maybe <laughs> was tired. And instead it was just, uh, yeah, settling into that feeling and trying to be <laughs> as okay with it as I could be, given how bad it felt. But like, yeah, even downhills would feel so hard. <laughs> like, wait, this is supposed to be a, a recharge mile and I'd this be working. This is the free gravity part. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so there was less troubleshooting and more okay. just trying to get my head around, like, this is the day. There's always time for things to turn around, so let's just keep giving it time. Um, you are, like... I don't know, I'm used to watching you run at the front of the race and kind of be like in control of everything. But for the first half of yesterday or whatever days those were, it was you and Annalise Rousset sort of, I don't know, doing some accordioning and leapfrogging. And it wasn't until the second half of the race where you began to take charge of the, of the women's race and lead off the front. What was it like being like around some women and yeah, racing like that? I loved it. Annalise is amazing. She's a wonderful human and so strong. Um, I got to meet her last year at Grand Raid. Okay. So we already sort of knew each other, but we actually got to spend some miles together uh, yesterday and it was cool. It was fun to just have people around in general. Yeah. Um, and like, we definitely kept accordioning like with different sections of the course. It seemed like on all of the uphills, you would reel her in and then on all of the downhills, she would just, yeah, make some distance between the two of you. She is a very strong runner in general, but for <laughs> sure she crushes downhills. <laughs> um, it was actually, yeah amazing to watch her run downhills like all all the entire race it was she never got slower no no <laughs> so strong so like uh yeah her footwork is so good I was like see you <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hope I see you on the next climb <laughs> um there seemed to be a transition point in the race it must have been like going up Camp Bird Road where um instead of like catching up on the uphills and reeling Annalise back in, you put distance on her. And then um, at each aid station after that, you earned minutes back on the lead. Did Was that intentional on Camp Bird Road? Did you try to send it? Oh. <laughs> Uh, sending it was for sure relative. <laughs> Air quotes sending it. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Leaving your I told, I picked up my buddy Mike as my pacer. We mm -hmm. were super psyched 
before the race to hit Camp Bird Road together and like try and mash it Aww. and um, yeah, cruise up it as best we could. But I told him when we started, because in your I had to have a, I had a moment. Like we took a few minutes in the chair. I was trying to just regroup. It was super hot all day. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just feeling it. And when we started together, I was like, we're probably gonna walk a while. But we got shuffling, mm. and then the shuffling turned more to, like, a little more of a jog motion. And soon the legs still felt terrible, but they were at least cooperating with the motion I was asking them to do. They were they were going to do a little bit of the running motion. Yeah, they, they came to play a little bit. Now, last year you finished in the clockwise direction. This year was the counterclockwise direction. And so Camp Bird Road was also the place where in 2021 your race ended. You had stomach issues you just couldn't sort out that year. What was it like to get past that point and into new territory on the counterclockwise direction? So cool. We actually high-fived when we went by the Aww. spot. And I was like, that's the spot and we are not <laughs> stopping. See a spot. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then to just, you know, we got to Kroger's, felt like a big tipping point mm. to head into Telluride then of like, okay, we are getting to the last portion of this course and, yep. and we'll get to that rock no matter what it looks like. Um, there's been some talk about some some um, like interesting conditions in the last like third of the course, some snow, some really crawling around to get up passes. Yeah, can you share what the conditions felt like in the night and then in the early morning? Yeah, oh my gosh, yeah, there were some snow fields because we were going through there in the night that were just frozen solid. Okay. Um, so like rock hard ice up slopes with maybe some divots from people's feet, but maybe not. Maybe not. Um, yeah, so it was a lot of just like jamming poles in, hoping that the feet can get some traction and uh, not fighting it. It was just part of the course, mm -hmm. you know, so it was like uh, not getting worked up over it, just yeah. trying to be as safe as possible. It seemed like as the race went on, momentum in you, I don't know if that's a good word to use, but it just it just felt like it was like, okay, she's like really rolling now watching from the outside looking in. Did you feel momentum building as the race went on or were you still in like, okay, I'm just chipping away as, as carefully as I can? Just chipping away okay. as carefully as okay. I could. And uh, I mean, I was trying to squeeze everything I could yeah. out of my legs knowing like you can rest after this, you know, you uh, can take a beat. So let's just see what we can get out of them. But it was hard work till the very end. Did you have any moments where, despite spending a lot of time working hard, where you were like, look where I am, look what we're doing? Absolutely. I think this whole course, uh, you have to be taking that in while working hard because it's so beautiful here and the wildflowers were out in force and the snow you know looked really pretty even though it was difficult to move across sometimes but this is an amazing place. What was it like running 100 miles yesterday and the day before that were so different from the 100 miles that you ran three weeks ago? Like these are just two different worlds of, of a sport. Yeah, it felt kind of cool because okay. of that, because it was a whole different game. Yeah. You know, having poles out there, hiking up at altitude, um, and just knowing going into it, this is a, you know, full day plus adventure versus uh, maybe less than a day adventure. 15 and a half hour <laughs> adventure, let's be honest. And Way less than a day. <laughs> that makes it feel different, you yeah. know? It has a different feeling about it when you're like, uh, you just have more time to process everything and problem solve anything. And uh, yeah, it was cool that they were so opposite. Um, Last year, you chunked a half hour-ish out of the course record. This year, you chunked another half hour-ish out of the course record. You've progressed the Hard Rock women's overall course record about an hour in two years. But knowing that you had Western states in your legs three, from three weeks ago, I find myself asking myself, and I heard a lot of other people saying yesterday, what could a person like her do if she didn't have Western states in her legs here? Do you feel compelled to come here and just like really let it rip ever? Well, maybe it's more of, can you please come here and do that someday? <laughs> I love it here. I love this course. I think the toughness of it is 
uh, intriguing and, you know, figuring out how to bring your best self to those days out in the mountains is pretty cool. So I am not done here, but we'll see. Yeah. There's a lot of adventures out in the world still. There sure are. Um, Speaking of adventures out in the world still, what does the rest of the summer and maybe the fall hold for a person like Courtney DeWalter? Man, that is way up in the air right now. So rude to ask. (laughs) I have some ideas, but in the last, I think, like four miles yesterday, Kevin (laughs) was pacing me, and I just said to him, we are not talking about (laughs) August or September yet. Like, let's get to this rock and then give ourselves a week or so and then maybe assess the systems. Because yesterday I was like, I don't know if I'll ever run another step. It was so hard. Um, so fair enough. The, the future of Courtney DeWalter involves beverages, snacks, and what, like porch time or couch time or lake time or... Yeah, all of that sounds okay. perfect. I would love to do it all, please. <laughs> Congratulations to you on your course record. Um, oh, I neglected to mention that you set the Western States Hard Rock double record yesterday. Congrats on your win of the 2023 Hard Rock 100. Thank you. <laughs>